now that we have fitted the quick change tool post onto the lathe, it's time to examine the tool holders. Now, as I said in the previous video, the quick change tool post was a gift or a Christmas gift from my son in law. In addition to the tool post, I've got five tool holders here. And we'll look at them. Uh, all five are de detailed on this dimension sheet. So let's first of all look at the numbering nomenclature. 250 appears to be the Chinese designation for this series. One is the size of the tool post. It appears that the 250 series come in five different sizes. There is a size zero that fits the mini lathe. And then the tool holders are numbered one, two, three, and so on. So going back to this tool holder, it's a 250-1 that leading one means it's the size one series. And then the next two digits indicate the number of the tool. In this case, it's the number 10 tool holder. And 10 is the uh, tool holder, knurling, facing, etc., etc. Style 10. These three are tool holders only. This style 10 tool holder holds a tool here. It's also a tool in itself in that it knurls. So this is sort of a combination tool and tool holder. 250-1, all these tools will be 250-1, and this is style 01, or style 1, and it is merely a rectangular opening. The tool would fit in here and be secured with four Allen head screws. The height of the entire assembly tool and tool holder is adjusted by not by turning this threaded rod you can turn it, it's removable but by turning this neural knob which adjusts the height of this zero two is exactly the same thing as the zero one except it's got a groove running down the bottom. That allows me to put some small circular tool in there. This is holder number four and it's a boring bar holder. I believe it will take a five-eighths or three-quarter diameter boring bar by removing this bushing. The last one is a parting blade holder and the blade is tightened by sliding this wedge down by the action of uh, this screw. The screw goes up at an angle, pulls down on the wedge to tighten the blade In order to populate the tool holders, that is, get something to put in the tool holders, I ordered seven pieces of turning tools. 
This is a cutoff tool. The tool facing to the left. This is a straight cutter. This is a threading cutter. Another left facing turning tool. And two boring bars. This one is a threading bar for internal threading, boring bar. So these are external tools, these are internal tools, boring to enlarge a hole, threading to thread internal threads. The boring bars are flattened. I don't know how you'll see that. They are flattened. It's inserted into the holder, they'll lay flat and place that places its tool at right angles to the work by virtue of the fact that they're flat. If I had a round bar, I wouldn't be sure it was square in the tool holder. But I could use a number two holder, which has a groove at the bottom. But with a boring bar that has flat on the top and the bottom, the bottom can rest on the bottom. And these tightening screws can press down on a flat. All the rest of these tools will fit in a number one a number two or in a pinch a number ten because it does have a, the ability to hold a tool. So what's the difference between these style tools and the tools that were used with the rocker tool post? Well In most cases, I used high speed steel squares, 3 eighths of an inch, and then ground the cutting tool I needed. Now, if this tool gets damaged or dulled, it's necessary to regrind it. And Actually, I've seen these very short. You can't really shorten the tool a hell of a lot because you need enough for the tool holder to grip. These tools, the black metal should never wear away. The cutting is done by the carbide tips. And with exception of this one, all of these tools are double-ended even the parting tool is a double-ended tool where the carbide insert is double-ended so you get two two bites of the apple the threading tool is triple so if I damage this end I can just rotate it until the new, the new one appears these tools all came in this telescoping plastic case and with a Torx driver. It's not necessary to tighten these Torx screws very much. And of course, if you dull or break all two or three sides, these are available for about a buck a piece. 
So I've done a video where I used this tool, this tool, the threading tool, and the parting tool. The video will end rather suddenly because I had a bit of a lathe malfunction. It's already been fixed. So we'll see these four tools used and uh, this one's really just another version of this one. And I'll do a boring video, maybe an internal threading video as well when I get a piece of stock that suits. So that I'm going to say goodbye and thank you for watching, but the machine work follows. Now the only thing I know about this steel is it's a uh, 8 millimeter Mauser rifle barrel. That would date it from 1893 to about 1945. This is a straight cutter. I'm going to be running about 800 RPM. And I'll give it a uh, 40 thousandths cut at a very, very slow feed rate. very nice cut. This is a CCMT cutter. I'm going to run the same speed and feed. Very nice finish this time. This is the same cutter I'm going to try to face with it. I've installed a parting tool and I'm going to adjust its height to be on the center line of it. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to hand feed this in. I've slowed the machine down considerably.
tool looks just fine. I've installed the threading tool. I don't really know what kind of insert this is. Well, I mean, it's a threading insert. I don't know the number. I've turned this down to a half an inch. I've cut a thread relief groove using the parting tool. And I'm set up to cut 12 threads to the inch. That looks pretty good. We'll just make a scratch pass 